put my trust in you. I walk by faith, each step by faith, to live by faith. I put my trust in you. morning. Welcome to church, everybody. Excited we can come together today. Uh, welcome to all the daycare families that are here to see their, uh, the, I think, the Easter, their Easter special um, little uh, put the thing they put together. So excited for that. That'll be right after I give a few announcements. So welcome to all the little kids and families. Uh, just, uh, just excited today is a day that the Lord has made. So welcome to church. Just a couple announcements. Uh, today, following this service, the, as you notice, the, the youth are putting, uh, doing a little fundraiser today, uh, putting on some meals. Uh, if you guys already had some of that, thank you so much. Um, but we're ac they're actually putting together some uh, walking tacos, uh, not just with Fritos, but there's both kind of Doritos and tortilla uh, chips and all sorts of stuff. So walking tacos after this service, if you'd like to hang around and have a meal, uh, to just blessing some youth to go to Peru, help raise money for the airfare. So... Um, just thank you so much in advance for all that you guys have done uh, for that. Um, tonight it says Holy Spirit class. There is not a Holy Spirit class. Sorry for the confusion. Um, so no class tonight. Um, but the Sunday night classes will pick back up Sunday, April 22nd for both youth and adults, uh, the 22nd. Um, as well that week there is a Peru meeting after second service. Um, so just excited for those things coming. Um, just uh, look forward to to everything that God is doing. If you ever have a prayer request and can't reach one of us, uh, forgegarage at gmail.com. It's right here in the bulletin. Uh, you can email your prayer requests there, and they'll read them, pray for them, give them to us, and we'll try to um, get them in the bulletin, different things like that. So uh, thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, just excited for today. Let's pray. God, just thank you so much um, for who you are. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to come together this morning to love on you, to worship you, to, to set our minds on you. So, God, we pray that you be in this place. Bless this time, God. I pray that you bless this offering, that your will be done. And just, um, God, we give you our prayer requests. Lord, I pray that we would trust you and know, God, you uh, make all things work together for the good, God, of those who love you. So, God, we thank you for that promise. We, we are excited for that. So, so, God, we ask that you move in an amazing way, God, that we would see your glory. I pray that you be with the little kids as they come and, and perform and just that it— it's already so special, God. Just let it uh, be amazing. So we love you. We thank you for this time and for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Um, as uh, Justin said, uh, this is Little Strength Child Care, some of the preschoolers, and um, we have some songs and then a special presentation that we'd like to share with you.
Okay, um, we're going to try something that we've never done before, so please pray for us. <laughs> um, we have what we do the week before Christmas is we have these Easter eggs, and there's 12, and each Easter egg, maybe some of you have seen it, each Easter egg has something that tells the story of Christ and death on the cross and then his resurrection. And so there's something little tiny in each egg. And so we have the kids come up and open the egg, and then they have to tell us what it's about because obviously we've taught them the story the whole week. And we had another song, and it just kind of wasn't, you know, going as planned, and, um, you know, God works that way. And so Emily had this amazing idea, let's do this in front of the congregation because, and like I said, prayerfully they will answer the way they have all week. Um, and so we're going to share that with you. A donkey. <laughs> A donkey. Um, um, it's it's for what 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 Jesus ride on the donkey. Wonderful. Good job, buddy. You did good. We'll get Judith one more money. Because he likes money more than Jesus. Awesome. A cup. A cup. They drink the juice. A hand. Um, black hand. <laughs> what are they doing? What are they doing? Uh, to pray to dad. Thank you. Okay. Like that. Them just beat Jesus up. <laughs> they beat Jesus up. Um, Je um, Jesus beat his head and he died in the cross. They nailed him on the cross. A die. Because um, they, who, whoever will the dice and, and get number. Diet number. Oh, Jesus, quote. Before, when he put the nail in his head, <coughs> I mean his hand. His 
side. Let's side. His hip. Um, Jesus put in the water. He uh, he poked it and died. Um, it's a trough because um he was wrapping Jesus up. Um, he put it in the tomb for Jesus to not it out. <laughs> um, Jesus, um, he's all gone and he's not in the cage. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Good job. Good morning, everybody. Glad you all could be here today. We can give the kids another hand. They did a nice job.
I'd like to welcome everyone to stand and sing along with us and just wish all of you a wonderful day today. Okay, <laughs> got some uh, technical difficulties here, so bear with us. So uh, the first song we're going to do is called You Are My Hope, and that's talking about how God is our hope. You know, there's many things in our world. We see things on TV all the time, or you may experience things when you're out and about every day, and people want to give you this idea, this is your hope. This is what, this is what you can do that will make you happy. This is what will take care of you, but that's not true. God is the only one that can take care of you and loves you and will help you through all the situations that you encounter in life each day. So God, you are our hope.
know that you make everything glorious with the lives that we go through each day. And we know we have trials and tribulations that you are right beside us, Lord. And that when something may look bad or we think, oh, this is never going to change or I don't know what I'm going to do just in a hopeless situation. God, you make everything glorious. We just have to trust you, Lord. Help us to trust you more, God. And let us see that everything is glorious. The day is brighter each and every one of us here today and those that aren't here today he loves all of us and he's a good good father usually every time we play this song I share because I never know who's here and what they've been through and all of us have fathers here on earth and some of us may not even know our fathers but God your father he loves you so much so if you don't know your father or maybe your father hasn't been a good father figure in your life it's all right because God is your dad and he loves you and he'll take care of you and all you have to do is just ask him to come into your heart and to help you through life each day and to forgive you of your sins and he will be there beside you all the time nobody else is with us all the time but God is with us all the time and I just can't share enough how much he loves you so take that home with you today that God loves you and he is your father. He's a good, good father.
Thank you for taking us in as your children, Lord. And God, we just, we just can't comprehend how much you really, really love us. Help us, Lord, to see that you just love us so, so much. And you want to have a relationship with us. And you want us to be more involved in a relationship with you and talking to you through our prayer life, through just walking and talking to you every day, Lord. Thank you for your love.
Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love. No matter, no matter what we do, you still love us. We pray that you love us for doing good, Lord. Doing what you would have us do. And thank you for the great love you showed on the cross. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Bless this time together and bless all that's going on here in this building today, Lord. Bless the word in your name. Amen. got me there, Joe. There I am. Hey, God, good to see you. Thanks for coming. Man, it's like January out there, isn't it? Yeah. Golly, you're getting the snow for you tonight. Can you believe that? The week after Easter is always kind of a bummer, too. You know what I mean? It's kind of like you get all the big crowd and all the stuff and big Easter play. Everybody dressed like a Roman soldier running around here. <laughs> Come back the next week. But there were Schuler's Donuts if you got here early enough, right? I don't care about you, but that makes everything okay. <laughs> Chocolate cream filled chiller donut? Ah. Uh, uh, what else do I want to say? Hi, Ashley, how you doing? You got the biggest smile award today. You got the biggest smile. You working? Yeah, we pray for you Wednesday, what? You go to work tomorrow? Interview. Well, just do that big smile thing. You'll do great. Because you got the biggest night, greatest smile ever, okay? Yeah? You guys want to see it? Do you? Hey, Ashley, come here for a minute. Come on. We prayed for a Wednesday night. This girl, you know, you ever have a period of time in your life where you can't really catch a break, right? She's been through that period lately that car wreck, right, car wreck, got offered two jobs, yeah. and then they reneged on them, right, yeah. and then you come to church, you got the biggest old smile, <laughs> so, uh, but you're going in for an interview, right, yeah. if that doesn't work out, all these people right here will be thinking about you for work, okay, I wanted to get you on the stage, because <laughs> we're going to get you some work, girl, okay, we're, that's going to work out, you all love Ashley, you do, don't you? <laughs> No, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Golly, gee, you guys are like sleeping on the first question here. All right? Everything good, though? How's Dad? Uh, Dad's getting better. Um, actually, yeah. the, after the prayer and everything, uh, next day. We prayed for you Wednesday. A bunch of yes, people prayed. Bunch of us, yeah. And you got an interview the next day, and your dad? Uh, was feeling so good that he was able to go out to dinner and was shopping. Yeah. Her dad, her dad's, yeah, that's good, yeah. Her dad's been in a wheelchair, and, and uh, he got like a $100,000 wheelchair, right? Oh. They can go like zero to 50 in, isn't it great? Yeah. It, you know? It's really nice. It stands completely up. Um, yeah, it's he, awesome for he him. calls it his Cadillac. His Cadillac, so. <laughs> All right. Hey, be thinking about it, Ashley, and if you know of some work, you like to do office work, don't you? Yes, I do. Are you any good at it? Oh, I'm very good at it. Okay, that's right. <laughs> That's the right answer. That's the right answer. Okay. All right. We're, you. You. Yeah. You're sitting over there. 
Okay. I, you're just making your rounds, huh? Yeah. Uh, I, it's pick on people day, isn't it? You know, we got two couples. Where's John? Is he working today? We got two young couples getting married. Coming up here real soon. Faithful, wonderful couples. Beautiful couples. Getting married. Young couples. I don't know about. Listen, I love doing church. I love. But there's nothing better than people faithfully coming to church, getting married for me. And that's coming up. And I'm so excited about that. Just a couple little facts I want to give you. You're having how many bridesmaids? Thirteen bridesmaids. On this stage, thirteen bridesmaids. That means I'm going to have to stand like way back here. You know what I mean? Thirteen bridesmaids. Are you paying them? No? Okay. That's a lot, man. That's a lot. Is John trying to have 13 guys? He's got 12? He's looking for one? You're just going to be odd and odd and even, huh? Okay. That describes your relationship pretty much, doesn't it? Odd and even. I'm joking. And another young couple about there in the balcony getting married. We could do, start doing some marriage counseling. <laughs> Well, I'm going to warp their minds forever. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming to church today, okay? I really am excited about our church. I've been doing this a while now. I, we started in, uh, I don't know what year we started. Someplace back in the late 90s. And uh, I've never been so excited about pastoring a church in my life. I really haven't. I think we got better quality people, and not speaking bad of the old people, but this new group we got is amazing. Hey, I'm so glad you're here. I hope I can inspire you. That's my motive at this point. I'm not, I'm not gunning for a television show. I just hope I can inspire you about serving the Lord. Right? In the end, hey, let's all get to heaven together. Right? You, does that make sense to everybody? When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be, right? When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory, right? And we're old and we're young and we're this way and that way and the whole thing, you know what I mean? And uh, that's the way God wanted it to be and that's what a church is. And, and uh, I just want you to listen, while you're here on planet earth, just connect you know, it takes some effort on your part, you know. But if you'll connect, there's an awful lot of really super friendly people. I think we're blessed with the, the friendliest and nicest folks there is, okay. Most people get mad and leave us, end up coming back. Because they realize this is the best pond to be a fish in. You know what I mean? And if I could ever just meet with you and talk, I'd love to. If you haven't, if I haven't been to your house, uh... I'm available. <laughs> Fried chicken is good. <laughs> but I'd love to just get to know you more, okay? Some, some of the families are newer in our church and uh, just love to spend time, okay? Spend some time with a, fan, a couple this weekend and just enjoyed that so much, you know? Just enjoy people. So, Father, would you help us today just, uh, just to uh, do what you've called us to do? Um, my motive today, Lord, is just to, to speak your word. Father, I don't know where that word will give us a whipping. I, don't, I hope the word encourages. I hope we can laugh a bunch today. But at the same time, Lord, I know you know what we need. And I pray, God, that you just come here among us and you do what you do, that the Spirit of God, because I know how the Spirit works, you, you'll just make this very different than the last service. And God, that you'll just lead us, and God, you'll speak the things that need to be spoken. I pray that's what happens today. 
So God, I, I, I never wanted to do this without you. And I pray I'm speaking to a people who never want to do anything without you. And God, that you'd meet us here. So Lord, in the minutes we have, would you just fill them full of your goodness? Would you just fill them full of your word? Would you accomplish something that no man can accomplish? Would you speak? Lord, you use a preacher. I don't understand all that. But often you use a preacher to get these spiritual concepts across to people. It causes us to be reminded again of, of God and how you work and how much you love and, and how you never, never stop. So Lord, just use a preacher today uh, to do your purpose. And we'll give you thanks for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, where, where we're at today, we're going to talk about this risen Savior. Ah, we serve a risen Savior in the world today, right? One thing that makes us amazingly more wonderful than any other religion of the world is that our Savior lives. Yeah? He lives, he lives, he lives. We go through Easter time, you know, and there's Easter egg hunts and all that stuff. And, and you know, we do a play here and all, all the stuff, you know. But just to take a minute here to talk to you about how much Jesus has already done for us. I get to the end of the first service and said, Lord, I just want to rededicate my life again to serving you. I just want to start all over again, Lord, and say, God, again, I just want to know you more. I want to lay everything down. And I pray that I can inspire you today as we look at these verses that God so loves you. When he says, I, he so loves the world, he so loves you. You can see it here in these verses. For I deliver to you the first of all that I received, that, I received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. Why did Jesus die? Why do you have to die? For my sin. Right? I was drunk the day I brought my mother home from prison. In the rain. How's that old country song go? Yeah, I just said a lie. You were like, really? Your mom went to prison? <laughs> no, I just tried to catch you off guard there. That's what I tried to do. My mother wasn't a president and I wasn't drunk. But how we're all sinners is what I was trying to get across. Maybe I didn't do a very good job doing that. How we're all sinners. How we were stuck in it. You know what I mean? Adam sinned. He got us in this sin nature. We were born into a sin nature. You, you, listen, you know how little kids are. You've got to correct little kids from doing, you know what I mean? We just have a sin nature. And, but the Lord died for my sin. Now think about that. Just he died for me. He died for you. I know it's 2000 years ago and it seems pretty far removed in the whole thing, but Jesus on that cross, hey, knew you, knew you needed a savior and died for you. The hero, the superhero of our faith is the Son of God. His name's Jesus. He died for you. He died to make a payment for you. Died so you could live forever, you know. Died that you wouldn't have a sin, you know, your sins could be forgiven. It's really kind of amazing that Jesus died for my, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us is what the scripture says, you know. When I didn't care, John, I, John has this quote. I've heard him say it before to the guys in jail. John Omnis doesn't have a whole lot of mercy for some of those guys in the jail as they start complaining. Well, God, you know, God did this and God that, and they use his name in vain and the whole thing. And, and John at some point will get upset with them, you know, blaming God for all their problems and all their stuff. And he'll say, how dare you blame God for all your problems? You haven't given him 10 minutes of your whole life. Why was you a sinner? I don't know about your story, but I'll tell you my story. The Lord ran me down. I don't know how hard the Lord been pursuing you, but the Lord been pursuing. I don't know why he called me special. I don't know why. I mean, I'm not trying to build myself up here today, but the Lord really thought I was something. Because most of my life, he'd been chasing me. I don't know why he didn't quit on me. I, he should have quit on me. I dumb to the expon exponential <laughs> You know, dumb times dumb times dumb. Dumb and dumber, I got them both. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. My, my brain, 
the cranium here, my, my, my skull right here is extra thick. You know what I mean? I got to have an extra big hat to fit on this extra thick brain, skull, you know? Because that takes me a long time. I'm a stubborn human male. You guys are like, yeah, I know. Anyhow. <laughs> the Lord had to chase me down. My, my story is so messed up. I told it a little bit on Wednesday night. My story is so messed up. It's just so messed up. Why God would come looking for me, I don't know. I don't know. I was a sinner, man. I didn't know him. There was a moment when nobody in my family even cared. My mom and dad came to the Lord. My dad just for a short period of time. But he came to the Lord. And somehow in, that, in those early teen years when they were serving the Lord, the Lord just grabbed a hold of me. I don't know why. I can't express to you. The one thing that I've been able to comprehend about God is that he does love me. The Lord loves me. I, maybe some of you struggle with that. But I, I just know for me, God, everything I've ever known in the scripture points to God's great love for me. God's great love for you. The things that he has ahead for me, I'm so excited about. And Paul just starts saying, because Paul's one of those guys like me, everything in his life was, he was kind of a richy rich, you know what I mean? Raised in the finest schools, the Jewish of the Jew, the highest, you know, the, ooh. The Lord kind of had to come bust him down, but the Lord was looking for him too. And I know if you're sitting in this room today, that you got your story, hey, he come chasing you too. Right? Aren't we thankful? The one thing we got in common today isn't that we've lived a similar life. We've all had different paths. The one thing we have in common today is the Lord come pursuing us. His great love, he, he wants us to know today. And it's just a reminder, and this is just maybe, a, you know, the, the, the first grade level of Christianity, that Jesus died for your sin. You know what I mean? It's the most, but, but no other person ever claimed to die for people's sin. I mean, there's no other religion where the leader died for your, where they paid such a great price to purchase something so big. Right? I can talk to you about some of the world's religion, but nobody, nobody ever rose again. But better than that is nobody's, none of those people ever, 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 ever had a plan that it would cost them everything so that others might gain. Next verse. And that he was buried... And he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. <laughs> it's awesome. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Who's ever done that before? You know, there, I just tell you that right now, uh, for all, for lots of, for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, there's not been a lot of controversy over Jesus. You know what I mean? People just... Ex you know, the church in the 1900s just received Jesus for, you know. But again, there's becoming this controversy. There's a man out there now saying that Jesus never really died on the cross. It was just a hot day, and he'd gone through all that agony, and he really just passed out. And they, they put him in a cool tomb, and in that cool tomb, he kind of woke up there. That's one guy's theory. I, I believe in that shroud of Tehran. I, I believe that was the very close of Jesus. They still can't figure out how that image got on that cloth. I, I still, everybody wants to question all that stuff, and I just say, nope. Evidence. They all go to that, that, that tomb site. You know, there's a holy sepulcher, you know, or whatever. I don't even believe it's that place. I believe it's the garden tomb. I believe it's the one that the old... I, I don't know if you've even looked at some of that. I just believe Jesus was buried in a different place and they all want to go and anyhow. But my, my point in all that is he's not there. I always thought, what a one place I'd never want to go is a place where Jesus isn't. You know what I mean? 
I, I know that sounds funny because some of you are like, oh, I'd like to go. Well, he ain't there. I'd rather come to church because he is there. Does that make sense? I, I feel better about Jesus being in church than I do over there at the tomb. I go over to the tomb. I, I, listen, I, they, the, the tourists are doing, they're going over there, they're looking around in there. Hello, hello, hello. He ain't here. Nope, he ain't out here. He only stayed here for a little while. Motel six weekend, you know what I mean? Just rolled a big old stone up in front of that thing, thought they had him locked in, posted some guards. <laughs> ain't no grave going to hold my Jesus down. Nope, ain't going to happen. Nope, 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 nope. And he got up out of that grave, man. He freaked them all out. I mean, that's, that's the funny part about this whole story. I probably ought to be teaching that today. Every one of them was like, bah! You know, they were all, don't be afraid, Mary. It's me. Bah! Where'd you come from? I'm alive. What? Uh, isn't it funny how in our... Even those people are very close to Jesus. We talked about this even at the Easter play last week. Those that were really close to Jesus, the best, sad thing about the story, at the time of his death, they all scattered. I'll tell you this, when they got filled with the Holy Spirit, they didn't scatter no more. They became these steadfast, believing world changers of what they became. I don't know if you're going through that transition or not, where you're fearful and... I, but I hope you mature into the people when you begin to realize Jesus is alive. I hope you mature into this people where you become a world changer. Does that make sense? Where you're, where you're not afraid anymore and, and your Jesus is alive and it is all true and, and, and he did die for your sins and you are going to live forever. You know what I mean? And you got nothing to fear but fear itself. You got nothing to worry about because God is your father and he's a good, good father. Right? Yeah, yeah he is. Sure he is. I brag on my father a little bit. You know what I mean? My father in heaven just met all my needs according to his riches and glory. He's been good to me my very first day all the way to this very day. I can't tell you how good the Lord's been to me. He's been good to me in the morning and in the afternoon. You know, He's been good to me in the church. He's been good to me out of the church. He blessed me when, when, I, when I was struggling. He blessed me when I was praising him. When I, when I wasn't praising him, he had his, his eyes on me. You know, when I, when I wasn't thinking about him, the Lord was thinking about me. He had never quit on me. In fact, he's trying to complete some things he began in me. And then he was buried and rose again on the third day. Hallelujah! What do you got to say about that? My Jesus lives. And then I have life through him. They say that he's on the right hand of the Father. That's what the scripture says, making intercession for us. So Jesus is on the right hand of the Father praying for you even now. You don't realize that the Lord is thinking about you. The Lord is thinking about you even now. He died for you. You think he quit on you? Shoot, he invested a pretty high price in you. You get all that thing? No, he's thinking about you. Some of you, he's trying to still run you down. He's still trying to chase you down. Your, 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 your cranium's really thick, and you just don't want to believe this whole thing. You think you can do it better on your own. Guess what? Some of all, you, all of you have just started in this whole thing, and you're just trying, you're pretty excited about this new life you've found, you know, where Jesus brings life, and you really don't have to worry. You really don't. You don't have to worry about death. You don't have to worry about this life. Just do right things. And God, if you'll put him first, hey, he'll supply all your needs. If you put him first, he'll, he'll be good and good to you. Right? Some of you all have been on this journey for a long time. And it's time right now, hey, where the Lord wants to use you to do awesome and amazing things. Some God's been pouring into you for years now. Now, hey, let's start having the faith to just step out. Hey, it only takes a mustard seed to do what? Move a mountain. So some of you have been in this a while. The Lord's saying, okay, now let's go. So where are you in all that if you're coming along in the Lord? Hey, where are you in that? I'm just trying to challenge you to the path. Are you growing in this precious faith? Are you growing in the things that Jesus said? He's alive, by the way. He's the head of the church. 
Hey, I always want to be involved in something where Jesus was the head. You know, Jesus is the head of the church. I, I, there's been times I got so mad. You guys don't understand all this. But in my, in my lifetime, I've been so mad at the church. I've been so mad at pastors. I've walked away saying, I'm never going back to church. So mad at people. People. Let me do, can I just tell you this? Tell you a secret. 95% of the people in the church are wonderful. 5% of the people in the church they're pains in the butt, man. They're pains in the butt. <laughs> and those 5% of people in the church they're the one that's going to speak something to you and get you mad. But the 95% love you. It's funny how we focus on all the wrong things. How the enemy works in our life to get us focused on all the wrong things. How we read here in the scripture that Jesus rose again on the third day and he came to give us life. And he doesn't want to caught in all the enemies of the, the tricks of the enemy. But the enemy would love to get you all caught in his tricks. You catching all that? So much of it's right up here. Next one, go, go please. I gotta go faster. And then he was seen by Cephas and by twelve. Go ahead. Jesus rose and he was seen. And after he was seen by five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part are still alive. Go ahead. And after that he was seen by James and by all the apostles. Hey, they saw him because they those scared people that run and ran from the cross. By the time they saw him or risen, they, they went into all the world. If you've ever read Fox's Book of Martyrs, they all ended up giving their life for this one Jesus. They became these amazing, incredible world changers, went all over the known world sharing the gospel of Jesus. For most of them, it cost them their life. Now, who would go to their death if they hadn't sent a risen Savior? Just by the, the actions of the apostles is confirmation enough to me that they saw a, a Jesus that had been crucified alive. At one point, he said, he held out his hands to Thomas. He said, Thomas, it's me. Look at my hands and look at my feet. They say about heaven, you know the, the only imperfect thing in heaven, you, you know, that, know that? The only imperfect thing in heaven is going to be the holes in Jesus' hands and feet in heaven. That'll be the only imperfection in heaven. That Jesus, hey, anytime you know you're in heaven, you'll know it's him because you'll be able to see through his hands. That's a joke. I just... Poor Jesus can't even drink water out of his hands anymore. He... Anyhow, let's go on. Next one. And the last of them all, he was seen by me. Paul, Paul saw him as one born out of due time. I, I wish I could take some of these verses and just break them down. Paul just says, and I was a total misfit. That's what he's saying. And I got to see Jesus. I don't know about this, but I just feel like at times I've been a total misfit. You know who's going to get to see Jesus? I'm just telling you, live my whole life, hey, to live with him forever. But that moment when you get to see him, my dad, often they say your dad is the impression you get of, a, of your heavenly father, you know, and, and sometimes that gets really blurry. And uh, my dad, my dad just, you know. And I had to break some of that out of my mindset that Jesus really loved me. My dad had some anger issues, you know. And, man, I, you know, I, I wanted to, I started in this face thinking the Lord was always angry at me. And I, it took me a while to realize, no, he's not. He, he oh, I'll get to it in a second, but go on here. I think we're jumping some verses. 20, but now Christ has risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. You know what that means? I know we don't talk in those kind of terms nowadays. It's, it's uh, old English here, but Jesus rose from the dead and he was the first of all that would follow. 
is what that's saying. And when Paul says fall asleep, he's talking about death. So uh, he's become the first word. So he became the first of all those who have died. I don't know what you're all thinking, but, well, it's coming. I'll, I'll, I'm getting ahead of myself. There's going to be a moment like no other moment. Heaven's a place like no other place. Jesus is a man like no other man. Uh, you get all that? It's really, I don't know how we're not all, how all we're not full of joy, how we're not just so excited about what the future holds. I know our bodies start aching and this starts happening, we have that trouble and that trouble. Hey, but, but the, my, my Bible says that those are all momentary weights or momentary trials that will be totally overcome by the glory and the greatness of God when we see him. That makes sense? It's like this stuff, from God's perspective, it's all pretty temporary. It's all, it might be difficult for a moment. How's the song go? But joy comes in the morning. You get that? He's the first. He's the first. What he's trying to say, he's the first one. My daughter in Peru it started some ministry in a town that's pretty far away. It's probably 90 minutes to two hours away by car. It's the only uh, city you can get to by car. Most places they have to go to by boat. But there's a place about two hours away they go to in a car, and some doors have opened up there for them to do ministry there. It's a town that has a bunch of witchcraft in it. My daughter's pretty smart. She goes in and works with all the kids and brings Peruvian pastors along with her. So she just starts playing and goofing and telling kids uh, uh, stories, you know, uh, Bible stories and things. And, and the, the parents start coming. And the first thing you know, there's this amazing church built just based on drawing all the kids in the town in, you know. But here's what's funny about that. Years and years ago, her dad was the first guy ever got to Nalta, a place called Nalta. And what I'm trying to say is, Dad got there. I was one of the first American missionaries ever to get to that town because we kept trying to get across a, a, a bridge that wasn't there. In a big, long story, but I got there real early, you know what I mean? My story about that town is, we went in there one day with a couple of missionaries, Chris Livingston was with me, and, and uh, the tennis club in Springfield giving us like 3,000 tennis balls. I got to the city, first time we'd ever been there. Best I know, the first time any white missionaries have ever been there. Because the bridge, we crossed the bridge they were building, really, when we shouldn't have crossed it. It was not ready. And we were like the first white missionary. You couldn't get there by boat because it was just so far by boat. Very few white people had ever got there to do ministry work. And, and we're the first ones in there. And we're in there with like, we probably that day took 800 tennis balls. What a ministry tool, Right? We get in there. We kind of come up to the main bus stop thing there. And we say, hey, where's the church here? We're supposed to meet an older missionary lady. I think she's behind us. Where's the church? We'll just get there and, and just get to the church and start doing our thing. You know what I mean? So they said, we think the church is down there over the hill. So we go walking down over the hill. There's probably six or eight or ten of us with a whole bunch of tennis balls that day. And we start giving tennis balls out everywhere. We get down to that church and realize, oh, this isn't the church where the missionary lady comes. We think it's over there. So we walk all the way down the main drag, down the other way, all the other side of town to get down there and found out that isn't where the church is either. By then, we got probably 200 kids with tennis balls with us. They said, we think the church, the church turned out to be about half a block from where we got out of the bus. But we'd given away about 600 tennis balls and walked that whole town. And we came into that church building, a, a part of a parade. It was God's desire. We went into this place called Nalta, and we took that place over. That old missionary lady showed up, and she could preach Jesus, and she laid Jesus on him, and a whole bunch of them got saved and learned how to play tennis the same day. And I got to a place called Nalta. Hey, now the Lord's opened up some doors for my daughter to go back up there. It's a hard trip and a little bit expensive. And, but they're starting to go up there and they're saying, Dad, we're starting to work in Nalta. You know what I'm saying? I was the first fruits of that. Daddy got there before you got there. I know Nalta. I've walked all over Nalta. The place still has a bunch of tennis balls. It was about 15 years ago. I thought, you know what? 
we ought to go back with a bunch of tennis balls. All them kids are probably almost adults now, you know what I mean? They, they, oh, you're the tennis ball people. But the story I'm trying to tell you is, because I got there first, hey, we all know we can get there, you know what I mean? Because Jesus was raised from the dead first, hey, we're all going to be raised from the dead. Does that make sense? Why shouldn't my daughter go there and have success in that city? Her daddy's already been there. Why shouldn't I rise again, rise again and not, not see death? Because my, my, my heavenly father's already made a plan for that. Jesus has already been risen again. He was the first fruits of that. They said it never happened. It never happened before. You know, a man never died and raised himself. You know what I mean? But, but, but now, now they're getting up and now we're all going to go. See, this resurrection thing was this proof of, and that's what the scripture proof of that we're all going to rise. couple, I don't know, it's been 10 or more years ago, Chris Tomlin had this song, I Will Rise. You know that song? And that's such an inspiring song. Calling you back there? Hey, you got to find that. I will rise when he calls my name. Hey, no more sorrow. No. When you find it, just play it. I'll just sing. I'll just break into singing, okay? All right? Chris Tomlin, I Will Rise, okay? All right. Might end that way today. Go to the next set of verses. Colin, i got to get this little point in here. Next, whole next set of verses, sir. This is about Jesus rising from the dead, and we'd all rise. 1533, don't be deceived. Evil company, evil company corrupts good habits. Paul's saying, hey, now listen, God has all this good stuff for you. Whatever you do, don't hang out with dumb people. I mean, bad, habit people. As a youth pastor, what we used to do is lay somebody on the ground and, and then ask another young person to go pick that person up and said, hey, the person on the ground, pull. The person standing up, pull. Guess who normally won that? Normally, the person on the ground could pull the person down before the person standing up could pull the person. You know what I mean? Listen, the Bible. There's an anchor for my soul. I can say. It is well. I'll come back to that thought. Jesus has overcome. Perfect for this set of verses. And the grave is overwhelmed. You know that song, huh? Sing it. The victory is won. He is risen from the dead. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And I will rise. Come on, louder, louder. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Come on, come on, come on. No, come on. I, I can't hear you yet. Let's go. Sing, 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 sing. I will rise on eagle's wings before my God. Fall on my knees and rise. I Okay, enough of that. There's a day. Don't lose it. We're coming back to that. They all stood in their feet, man. That's the song for that verse, right? I didn't think you'd find it that fast. Real quick, this, pa this point. Hey, God never told you to fix every broken thing. In fact, for so many of you, God just wants you hanging with the right people. God wants to build you up, and he doesn't want you hanging around with people that have a lot of bad habits and negativity and junk. It's this idea that the Lord's saying, hey, don't hang around with people who bring you down. You get that? The Lord created the church for the church to be this very positive, encouraging, wonderful place. I hope, I hope you all have an experience like I've had. Even though there's been years of my life, I, uh, dumb people affected me. But other than that, the church for me has been this amazing, wonderful, loving, caring, beautiful place. If you were here a week ago at an Easter egg hunt we got had, we, we've had that for the last few years. We give away like 16 bicycles. I, I don't know. I don't even know how to express this to you. To me, all of our kids come. We have 100 kids come. They get all these candy eggs. You know what I mean? They get prizes off the prize table. 
they get into drawing to win bicycles. Does that make sense? Do you get all that? When we have prizes left over, we say, hey, we got door prizes going out and the whole thing. And kids leave here, their arms full, their parents' arms full. We, we had kids riding bicycles in the parking lot. It was the most exciting. And I'm just thinking, Lord, why isn't church like that for the adults? I mean, I'll get you some. We came in today, there were Schuler Donuts out there, you know what I mean? And we're working on, a, we're working on trying to raise a little bit of money for our teen, the teens to go in Peru, and you're participating in that. And people are giving, people are doing, and it's very exciting. And listen, I want you to feel so loved as you come in. I want you to be the encourager at times. That makes sense. I'd love for you to leave here and not leave here without encouraging one or two or three people. That makes sense? I'd like you to be little rays of sunshine, you know what I mean? And just, just do your thing. Run into somebody. You're going to run into somebody in a way out of this place. And just say, hey, well, I love you. Thanks for coming to church. Hey, but if you hang around with negative people, I know who they are in my life. I got oh, to be pretty careful about all that. Does that make sense? I, I could tell you, I, I wish I had more time. I, just tell, I could tell you the most negative Nancy stuff ever. I could just talk to you about people, how they want to gripe and complain and want to be this and want to be. The scripture's saying you don't have to fix all that. In fact, it's saying don't be deceived, evil company corrupt. It's saying don't hang out with that because it'll mess you up. You hear me? We, we have guys trying to come off drug addiction. They can't run with the people they used to run with. Can't do it. The people, the places, the things can't be the same anymore. And as soon as they start running back to that old thing, guess what happens? And the same thing happens to you. I wish I had more time to preach some of these thoughts. But right here in the middle of this resurrection set of verses, the big warning is, hey, you're going to rise. You're going to see the Lord. The Lord, he, he's, a first, he's coming to get you. And it's going to be glorious and good. You know, he's saying, but don't hang around with... People are going to drag you down. You hear me? Because what will they do? Pull you down. Next set of verses, Colin. I'm just running out of time. Here we go. For now I say that this brother in flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nor could corruption inherit incorruption. What he's saying here is carnalness is not going to inherit God's stuff. Hey, it's going to take being led by the Spirit of God, hey, to have God's stuff in your life. Everybody hear me? Can I just talk? I got just minutes. Talk to you very straight right here. If you live in your flesh, you're not going to walk in God's stuff. Here's what happens in the world today. I, I'm a... I'm a pastor of a church. I get it really well. The, the, the enemy wants to give me the, cause me to live by the same tricks. If I live in my flesh, I get, I let my emotions start running my life. I start making decisions based on my emotion. I start living by those things that make me mad or. But the Lord said, hey, I'm a son or daughter of God if I'm led by the Spirit of God. And what he's trying to say here is you're not going to get the God stuff. If you're living by the world. So you've got to get to the place where you're living, hey, led by the Spirit. And if you're living by the, led, led by the Spirit, then you'll start walking in the things of God. I wish, I wish I could just get a hold of people. I wish I could privately counsel everybody and just say, hey, stop living in your flesh. Stop living by how you feel. Stop living by what you think you need. If you put God first, your life will be glorious. He makes everything glorious. But if you try to do it on your own, I will I'll tell you, God's plan for your life is always a, a thousand times greater than your best plan for your life. Next one, please. Got to hurry, got to hurry. Go, go, go. Keep going. I'll tell you a mystery. We're not all asleep. We'll be changed. Good, big verse right next one. Go, go, go. In a moment, a twinkling eye. The last trump for the trouble sound and the dead of Christ will rise incorruptible and we'll be changed. That's the big rapture verse. In a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, the Lord's going to come get us. We're going to be changed. In a moment of time. I wish I had more time to preach it. Uh, in a moment, in a moment, in a moment. There will be a moment someday when the Lord's going to get a hold of us. He's going to jerk us up so fast, we're going to leave our bodies behind. i just try to preach this to you quick. You will be you in heaven. You will be known as you are known in heaven. 
You all get that? You think you're going to get to heaven and have a different mind? It's different. No. The knucklehead you are now will be the same knucklehead in heaven. <laughs> Your spirit and soul are, are the same. You get that? We're going to know sweet Norma in heaven because we're going to know who sweet Norma is. That makes sense? We're going to know her. You all get that? My wife not know I'm her husband in heaven? She won't need a husband in heaven, but she'll know I was her husband. Does that make sense? She won't need me. I have a joker. Anyhow, but... <laughs> hey, the only thing that gets exchanged in the moment of the rapture is you get a brand new body. That makes sense? That's what... You're you in heaven. Everybody thinks, well, I'm going to be a whole new... No, you're just going to be you with a brand new body. It's going to be glorious because that body, the things that new body can do, you remember when you were a kid? Better than that. <laughs> Anyhow, got to go. go. Go, 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 go. Get down to that last verse. You get in the whole thing. You can read it. Some your, eight, 50, 58, please. 58, and then we're going to sing a song. Therefore, my, bro, my beloved brother, be steadfast and movable. This is his summary of the whole thing. The Lord's going to come and get us. Don't hang out with knuckleheads. The Lord's going to come and get us. He was the first one to raise. We're all going to raise. Then he says, the summary of this whole thing is, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, abounding in the work of the Lord. How often do we use the word abounding? That's like a Winnie the Pooh phrase. And that's what I think of. <laughs> abounding. Hey, hey, and here's what I want. Abounding in the work of the Lord. I think... There's something we miss, hey, when we're all about us. And there's something we gain when we're doing the Lord's work. I'll go back to Ashley here just real quick. Ashley, your little daughter, something happened a week or so ago. She'll always love me, won't she? Yeah, she'll always. Something happened wonderful. I was able to, it just the Lord worked it out. I was able to do something for her little daughter. Hey. And that girl, how old is she? Ten, Elena. Hey, that girl will all... I did something the Lord just wanted me to do. Hey, when you're working in the work of the Lord, I just want you to know, there's something bonding, abounding, incredible. Serve the Lord. Give of yourself. Sometimes we don't have the joy that comes in, in serving God by blessing others. And the last thing here in this chapter is knowing that the, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Let me tell you this right now. It doesn't matter how big or how little. It doesn't matter if people see or people applaud. The Lord's telling us something here. I need to hear it. That everything I do is not in vain. Everything I do for the Lord matters. You see that? I know you do some, because it happens to me. We do things and we try to serve the Lord. You know what? Nobody cares and it doesn't seem to make a difference. So frustrating when you try really hard and it doesn't seem to make a difference. I'm not going to do that anymore. No, no, no. What the Lord's saying in all this is if you're serving the Lord, it all makes a difference. So, brother, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Everything you do for Him is valuable. I wish I had more time. I don't feel like I did a very good job preaching today. I hope it inspired you for good. You got that music? We're going to pray. Hit it, brother. Father, bless our time together. Lord, as we leave this place, even now, bless the time that we have exiting this place. God, touch us. There's Inspire us again, Lord, to serve you with all that we are, knowing that our risen Savior lives and that we live in him. We give you praise for it all, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for coming. Sing your way on out of here, okay? I can sing it is well. There you go. Thanks for coming, everybody. Jesus God bless you. Has overcome, and the grave is overwhelmed. The victory.